and I wanted them to butt them all up, mm-hmm. but they were carrying on about how to put out down. Yeah. 450 by 450, and now there's a strange stand. Yeah, you've got to upgrade great in between. You've got 450 by 450, but we were just talking about 60. Well, these separate porcelains are just square edges. You put them up together. No, 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 no. You still have a joint. Why? It looks really good when you put them all up together. It's fantastic. <laughs> That's why they come with a square edge. No. Have you ever done that? Sorry, I lived overseas, but that's all we do. Okay. <laughs> no. But it looks fantastic. Um, what what was the the, line, uh, the uh, smallest drain line you go is a mill and a half. Yeah. Because of the, the yeah. even though they're a machine cut and whatever, you get that slightest bit out through human tolerance when you're laying it, it'll escalate. Uh, <coughs> so, mill and a half grout joint, always. Uh, if you don't allow anything and you get in cracking, it's going to crack through the slab as well, where you get in cracking. I've never ever seen, it's my recollection, I've seen two pieces. Big areas. What are the requirements of time for the big area? If I, yeah, if I was piling this, this room, four metres, grids. You have an expansion joint, which means the glue does not pass through the joint either. So you lay four meters, and you have a nice clean joint, and you silicone that joint to match the color of the grout, as close as possible. You need to explain this to the client because it's always going to be a little bit different. It's one to a sand cement base, so it's a textured grout. The other one's a silicone, so it's nice and smooth. And you're never going to mask that colour 100%. You get it pretty close for all the time it's going to change colour. So you need to make them aware there is an expansion joint there because of tolerances and movements in tile. They grow and shrink like everything else. <coughs> the slab underneath, the floor underneath. So you have to have. Is it possible to call that joint to take that? Yeah. Yes, I think you are. Yeah. Get a yeah. back doing that, I reckon. You'll be masking every, every joint yeah. right yeah. along. No? Yeah. Losing patience. Yeah. 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 What Danny said before and all about natural deviation in tiles, yeah. I did an inspection of a house a month ago and there were the 600, 300 porcelains. <coughs> and there was quite a few of lipped tiles. A lipped tile means one sits slightly higher than the other, yeah. so it, yeah, it might be cocked like that and the next one sits flat. And the tolerance, I think, is about 2 mil in over level or, I forget exactly, thin standards and tolerances. And I just thought it very strange because it was right through the whole, you know, it wasn't a bad pile job or anything like that, but it was right through the whole job on, on the slab. And I just happened to see it at a client because she brought it to my attention and I've gone, yeah, well, they are lit. And I've gone through and marked all the lit ones. I'd like to see the tiles. And there were spare tiles in the garage, and I've got to look, open the box, and look down the edge of one. And that's like just not on every one. So when it was laid, if that tile had the, the little bend to it, it was causing a lip. Apparently, it caused a hell of a blue between the builder and the tile supplier. <laughs> but um, yeah, that was the logic of it. It doesn't look like it's, the tile is a pretty good job. Why is it only here, there, there? It's mm. not just the odd spot. What do you mean the say? Nothing up there. Yeah, but you don't, that amount you don't see when you're laying it. It's only when you start grouting it that you might pick up on it because it's a grout worse from one than the, the next. That's when you might pick it up and then the tile's laid and you just going, oh, hopefully I get away with it. Yeah. Yeah. You've done that? Well, I'm bad. That's the point You've done so, you found something. Not quite right, you think I'll not see it anything if I pick up on it. Well, I don't know. We've all done Alright, so normally the, the tile labour is the glue, and usually the grout, as long as you yeah. specify the grout, uh, mm-hmm. and any additives or whatever they need. Um, the builder. I, I know I'm what, bleeding this point to death. No, it's all right. So, I'm really interested, how many of these things, when you've marked them out, they're over 2 mil, so they're beyond tolerance. Mm-hmm. These lips that you found. Yeah. What does the homeowner do? They just say, look, it's wrong. But like, that's a big job. It's not like, oh, we'll just give them a little sand. It's a big job. Yeah, that, well, if it's you outside the standards and tolerances, remember, what when this usually happens is pre-handover. 
Yeah. So the house has been cleaned, everything's been finished. The builder and the client get together to do the walkthrough, and he is going to note whatever the client picks. Okay. And then he's got to try and get himself out of jail. You've got to explain standards and tolerances, whether it is or it isn't. Okay. If it's outside the standards and tolerances, the job is not going to get signed off. He is not going to get final payment. You're, you want to move in, you're renting yeah, somewhere else. Yeah, this you is the catch-22. Yeah. This is the catch-22. So what can happen is, you can see it, if it's a really shitty piling job, okay? Well, no, this is this this one, using this example. Okay. The the pile is good, the pile right. didn't say anything because of the reasons you said. All right, and now we're sitting here with right. the We've got two options. We delay, hand, hand over, until the problem is rectified, or you have an argument about if it's a fault or not. If it goes that far and you can't come to an agreement, it's usually going to end up in arbitration. <laughs> arbitration, mediation, all that before, before you can't the law. Law. No, I thought arbitration was the word. But in the case you're talking about, the builder is, is saying, yeah, well, it's obvious. I've got to take it sure I can see it's beyond two millimeters. Yeah. It's not in question. It's not an easy fix. It's not something no, that we've got to pull the tails off. So, you will then fill in. Uh, well, the builder uh, went back to the tiler. They're having a yell. Oh, the yeah. supplier, they're all having a yak at yeah. each other. But what about if the supplier goes too bad? Then my tiles, the builders, they're all trying to yell at each other. And you're. They'll be, be, be standing. Oh, you are. Tiles. All right. Mm. Yeah, the process is you can move in. You can accept practical completion. But you have paperwork to state that there is a defect that needs to be rectified. So the builder is giving you written confirmation. You can help me in here, Danny, because you might know the process better. Um, that there is a defect and it will be attended to period of time wherever it happens to be. Okay? So that way you get in. You what got you expect the builder's gonna do in this one, this situation? They're gonna have to do that. Are you expect yeah. that to happen? No, well, just pay more. Or I'll give you a free dishwasher. <laughs> That's what's probably gonna happen. Yeah. It's, it, they've paid yeah. ten grand for we, tiles. I'll give you five grand yeah. to keep back yeah. and just shut you up. You can cover yeah. an agreement. We That's had usually one, what happens in these cases. It can do. Yeah. We had a house we built, and everything was fine with the tile. A lot of tile, and everything was fine. <clears throat> But then the tiles started to chip later on. So it wasn't a lien, it wasn't a builder, it was the supplier. You know what ended up happening? They came in and relayed the whole house with tiles. Through the supplier manufacturer. The, man the supplier, yeah, through the manufacturer. Oh. Yeah, and what they ended up doing was putting the people up for a week or two weeks in a hotel to for accommodation because they had to move out the couldn't. They're really checking his reputation. No, they're straight over the top. On top, tiles on top of the old tiles. Oh, what happens the doors and everything and all the steps and whatever? Because it was on a slab, so it was just a fierce tile. It's too hard to pull the tiles up. So it's normal. You can lay tiles on the tiles. All the other heights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything can happen. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's and it's the same thing that you know, yeah. yeah. learn yeah. as you walk. Oh, yeah. 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 I've got another one I can ask. Yeah. 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 It's quite a long time. Sorry to. Oh, it's all right. It, it, yeah. It's good discussion. It, it gives it more reference. <coughs> Um, right, with your tiles, 10% wasted, you need to be able to work out what you need. Normally these years, normally maybe, sometimes, 50 times, you get drawings with four elevations of every wet area, bathroom, whatever. Okay? And it shows you how much tile it has to go in there. So you can work it out from there. Or, if you're working out without specifications, you're working to the minimum requirements for the wet areas, which is 1800 in a shower, 300 over a bath, 150 over a vanity. All floors in all wet areas. All right? And you have to remember about waterproofing as well. Okay? So you'll just work out an area, add 10%, and allow a provisional sum or a PCI. So you're asking the client, what do you want? Porcelain, ceramic. 
Cheap, mid range, high end. Cheap is 20 bucks a square meter, 25 bucks a square meter. Mid range, we'll see a 50 bucks a square meter. High end, the sky's the limit. Okay? So normally you're going to be working 50, 60 bucks a square meter. Porcelain, 60, <laughs> 70 bucks a square meter. Work. It doesn't really matter. You're normally at the price that they've agreed to. That's all you can do because you don't know. Okay? Um, Danny, what does happen if there's a problem? You want to be in? Oh, well, if it's a system, it's not in. No, but it's a no, no. It's a letter between the builder and the client for a non and for a, um, item, item to be attended to. Yeah, you're you're accepting practical completion with the proviso. This is action, okay? And then you've got something to go at at a later date, and if it doesn't get action, um. And it's the cash 22 of getting in, you've got to get out your rental or wherever, your, the house like you're born, you've got to move it out, you've got to move into somewhere, you've got to take it. Do you hold money back? Probably not, but still have an accept that. Do you need to work out every area? Take out things like the bath, because you're not going to tile that bath. Uh, but remember to add on hobs. Um, what, work out whether it's a poly marble or a tile shower base. Oh, Take out your vanity. Mm -hmm. The easiest way is to work out the area of the room take care of and then take it in out rather than take little bits out. Okay? Um, this area here? More often than not, the vanity would sit on top of the tile floor, yeah? If that's the way you build, yeah. Mm -hmm. The way I used to build, so I would lay the tiles in there. Yeah. Um, the only thing I'd, I'd probably just, just take off the path. around the vanity. Hey? It's like sort of cutting around the yeah, vanity. Yeah, exactly. Cost less. Cost less to tile, tile right through. Mm -hmm. Even if you put it, adding those extra tiles in, yeah. just the labour involved in cutting around it. Right. Mm -hmm. so yeah. It's like when you do the fix. How I used to do my tiles and fix was, I'd do my fix, but I'd only cut my skirts on. Then, I pull them off, they're all numbered and named to where they got to go, put them in a room, tile up the new plasterboard, then I put the skirt back on top, rather than yeah. tile into a yeah. skirting line. Yeah. Mm. I'd have to be clever with me cut. Well, that's, so, that's the whole idea of a skirting board, you're telling me, isn't it? Yeah. They cover up the joint and then oh, you'd be surprised to use it. I've seen a lot of the people are doing it the other way around, putting a skirting board and tiling up the yeah. bicycle shit out. Yeah, it does. Especially when you get the shrinkage in the rear and it pulls away and you leave back here crack. crack yeah. Yeah. Always. Yeah. My way of doing it, tile, get black polythene, cover the whole floor. Black polythene. Sit my skirtings on top, put the skirtings held the polythene in place, the paper comes in. He doesn't have to cut in at the bottom against the tiles. He doesn't have to worry about any splashes on the tiles. When he's finished, I just pulled it out. Nice thing. Oh. Pulled out your polythene. Yeah, and yeah, if, if it's jammed in any sections, Stanley knot oh, no. cuts out, yeah. can't see it. And then I've run around everything before. Almost caught every shirt and yep. the tile. Yep. Stop some moisture getting underneath when people are cleaning the tiles. Take all the time. Again, that's the level I was building that. That was my standard. Other people just cut and break. <clears throat> Would you do that same for the the kitchen as what you did for the bathroom? Yeah, I've if I'd run the tiles underneath the kitchen, yeah. we are good. It's the same kind of thing. Yeah. Um, if I'm waiting, I mean, especially if I'm waiting for the kitchen, yeah. the tiles underneath, right? Yeah. Um, sometimes I'll just get the kicker, put the kicker in, tile up with the kicker, so I didn't have to yeah, usually, work in between cupboards. Usually they've drawn where the kitchen goes on the floor, and if you tile over it. <laughs> yeah, in the kitchen, you don't even have to go right up to the wall, you leave the last line out. Exactly. Up, adjust the yeah. leaks, so. Put cuts at the back, just the packers, just so the kicker sits on. Yeah. Mm. There's all little ways like that. You need to be able to work out everything. Um, what's it for as a price for? 32. The tile has to do a bathroom, which is up the walls, all the cuts and around the sink, whatever. That's a bit more time, which means you charge you more per yeah. meter than you Usually up two rates, one for floor, one for walls. Yeah. Shower basin is another rate. The, the uh, shower basin. Right. Borders are another one. I built a house for, 
This is the sort of people you may have dealt with. He was a big whip with IBM. Travelled all over the world, sort of problems, whatever he did with computers, human resources, I don't know. Built this house for him and I explained about tiling, about PC items. You've chosen a tile and at the tile, maybe you just want to allow 25 bucks a square metre. I said, where you've got to be careful is borders. Because as soon as you start putting a border in, you drop off the square meterage and you go to buy the tile. Nice. And then you've got the lever. Anyhow, so he's gone out, or his missus has gone out, and she's picked a nice square 200 by 200 white tile. And he's bragging about it. Come in, we under what you've allowed. Oh, my great. Until I went down to order them and they wanted to know how many linear meters of tile, border tile I wanted. <laughs> She's getting three border tiles. Uh, One, two, three, around everything. Oh no. The border tiles cost more than the wall and floor tiles. Yeah. So we're not giving him the bill with the extras on. He's gone. You know what we got to do? I had to sell his car and he had to sell all his shares in IBM. Oh. oh. He could have sold his wife. The pit one. <laughs> I don't think he'd get much far. To pay my bill. I don't care. As long as I get my money, I don't care where the money comes from. But wouldn't you communicate that before they so come to I explained it to Was that all, all on, the, on the contract? That was all. Yeah, so. It's all written down there. Yeah. Price cost items, provisional sums for the tiling. Oops. I verbally explained it as well. Yeah. It's for tiling, not for borders or anything like that. If you want them, they're going to be extra by the tile. They were about seven bucks a tile, 200, five, 35 bucks. Times three, 105 bucks. Oh, Eric, you're attacking me. You believe that? You believe anything. I'm as soft as a pussy cat. You're going to make money, though. But you know, I don't work for nothing. Yeah, it doesn't. Not when it comes to thousands of dollars, anyway. Yeah, that's <clears throat> People hear what they want to hear. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you're probably in writing and they sign it. There's your out. I explained it. There it is. Everything you do, get it in writing. Has anybody ever seen a gloss top kitchen bench top? Mm-hmm. A bench top in a kitchen that is gloss finished laminate. Yeah. Would you ever have one? No. Yeah, what happens so to why it? Why not? Because it loses its gloss. <laughs> look at it and look at it and scratch it. <laughs> they don't have to touch it, you just have to look at it and scratch it. <laughs> why would anybody want to pick a gloss top? Because they think it looks already. Yeah, right. so you write it in. Mm. Okay, no yeah. responsibility, it'll be protected, <clears throat> but I will not be responsible for any scratches unless they're a, you know, a blatant heavy scratch from construction processes, however you want to work with it. Would you put a black door outside? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, you know that, but Joe blow down the street. It looks good, though. Three men at war. It's on the door. It's on the heat. It's on the heat. It's on the You've got two services, inside and outside. Inside might be painted yeah, cream to match the rest of the, the house. Outside is painted black. It absorbs the heat. It shrinks, it grows, it twists because it's trapped air inside. It eliminates everything. Yeah. What about black cladding, painted black cladding? Uh, black, everything. Try and avoid it. Bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So go for you. So go for you. It's on the door. You roll up on a 40, 40 degree day, you press your button and you drive in. And you take the door out because the door hasn't gone off and you didn't look. Because it's going to grow that much inside that opening. It's going to be fouled on the track system. We need to explain this. Did a house for the old man and he used black on these down pipes. It's a, a tutory style house, you know, with black timbers mm-hmm. and the stucco board and the dark brick, black windows. Down pipe, pick out the black. <coughs> One facing west, come down like that. <laughs> and ended up that shape at the bottom. Oh, shit. Yeah. So avoid black. So you write a disclaimer. You advise the people about not using it. Tell them the option. Tell them the consequences, and get them to sign it. And that's in your site file. You've got a problem. How's that go in regard to um, build the warranty and sign away your right to other people? Doesn't all of this work? <laughs> but you've got something. 
right? Because the, the weirdness is that this here, you are the professional, you should know better. But if the client wants it, I try to tell them, I put it right, what more can I do? So you've got, you might still wear a fraction of it, but not all of it. You might just leave it as uh, only the paint or black. Or it's a dear door. Yeah. What do you call it? Yeah. I, uh, I had an architect one at a black door, facing west, on a place. <laughs> I spoke to the architect and said, this is stupid, you know. No, it's kind of a little brilliant. It's what's the look I want, and rah, rah, yeah, but what about the client? Spoke to the client. Anyway, long story short, got it in writing that, you know, the, this door was not going to be warranted uh, because it was facing west, it was going to be painted black. Painted it black. Twelve months later, replaced the door. Got a call from the client saying, you're absolutely right, the architect is... <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And, uh, yeah, had to replace the door. That extra charge for that wasn't, you know, new door, new labour, everything else. Painted black, you know, or... No, 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 no. That's no way to... I was going to say, so did you wear that or they painted for it? No, they painted it because I had a good writing. I told them, I told them they'd nauseam. It is a stupid idea. Do not paint this facing west. It's going to get all the out from inside and it just completely walked. Solid door, everything else, didn't matter. The whole thing couldn't open or close it. So, you know. Yeah, it's all about risk management these years, covering your backside. It might sound tedious, pathetic, whatever you like. No, wait, it's a profit margin. Hey? It's nothing tedious about the profit That's margin. That's right. In the, eventually it's going to come back and either bite you or save you that bite. All these bits of paper work covering your backside. Risk management. Let's do a little exercise. Everybody work out on sweet floor, bathroom, toilet, and laundry floor, and work out the kitchen. Everything with tiles. Do them separate. Do the walls. Now we can see the floors. I just want to see again what numbers you come out with for and what you can see in front. Right? And put your margin on. Put your margin of weight on as well. You're going to get two figures. One for the weight areas, one for the black side of the wall. <laughs> and Sam? Sam. Take away the vanity in the shower. Yeah, the cabinet. Shower, bath. Eric, is there a soft copy of those on the files? Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'll just, just prepare one earlier. Very good, man. Thank you. It's a lot easier if you've got the hard copy. You can highlight yeah, areas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Got the what, sorry? Got a hard copy. We're just doing soft the top. Oh, the doors for the tile for the floor. The living area. Yeah. One. So that area is one. And that, them all added up to the second one. I just want to see what's the figure. Not minus the add ons or just the. You're working it out for the floor tiles. Oh, you're well, doing the floor. So I just did it. Let's just work out. Yeah, let's yeah. yeah. do all that area. Yeah, yeah. 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 All that area. That's not wet. 
Say I wanted to take out that. What do you call the corridor in front of the Where, where do I just measure with my ruler? Or do I, do yeah. I get it from? No, just push roughly. You haven't got size for that one. Yeah. Either. Um, that, this is not to scale though, is it? Well, check it. It is. This one's check it. It's not. It's not bad. It's close enough. Yeah, it's close. It's an estimate. Yeah. You're putting ten percent on. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if you're a, a point of a piece. Yeah. She's doing a bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> the back hallway, which is tiled, which is unusual having that tile. Back hallway is tiled. Is that a wet area? No, it's not a wet area, but it's the tiled it. You see, and it's unusual. All the square ones are Nothing's unusual yeah. hey, that's tiled. when you reach the plant. It's just not necessarily. It's not Lego. What you no. think is the norm. Okay. So, am I going to put that there as a wet area? No, no, just do all that yeah. area. Don't worry about bringing it down as a wet area for this, this thing here. We just get the area of what you think, the, how many square meters and floor tiles you need to order. Got it. So, it's floor tiles with the wastage. For them two areas, how many meters do you think? There's a multitude of standardized booklets you can get from HIE and MBA. I would always carry one of them in the car. Variation. You never know. When are you going to get hit for a variation? Act on it straight away. Variation contract. The duplicate. You fill it in there and then. It doesn't have to be a fixed price, it can be a provisional sum. Or a PC. You get the client to sign it, you give them their copy, you've got the copy. You've now done the legal thing. Right? If you do the variation without that in mind, technically you don't have to pay for it. You're going to do it. I'll show you ours. <coughs> Another booklet, notes of extension of notes of completion. So when you finish the job, you give them one of them, filled in. You've done the legal thing. Notes of extension of time if you want to pinch any time. Right. This is one job. Variation. Variation. Uh, 
The book. <laughs> book. I don't know why. I don't know why. What are we doing? I'm going to buy myself a Coca Cola. Coca Cola. Are you wearing straight masks? Oh, that's cool. And the more I hear about it, the more one is proficient in the building devices, the more professional it will be. The one that's like the one that's big, not the same. The one that's on the order right in there, like a Well, 
That's what I'm doing. <laughs> you, you're being very scientific, Harry. No one that. It's going to be spot on, <laughs> Area A, area B. Bryson, what do you get for here? Oh, here we are. Yeah. I'll just get a total. Alright, Terrell, who else wants to give me a figure? 17.3 one. 17.3? Are you doing laundry? Uh, ensuite? Yeah. Is that and that? Yeah. B is that and that? And the laundry as well, you're doing at the time. Yeah, the laundry. Oh, that's good. Crosses inside it? No, that one. The one below. That's ensuite. B, C. Oh. Laundry, toilet, bathroom, plus on suite. What's that? Yeah. What's that? Yeah. Yeah. I had it written down as B. Five meters. <laughs> How's that? That's e or B, it doesn't matter what you put. That area is spare against that area there. Left side, I got 19.92. 19.92. Um, I'm still the working out B. Anybody else? Oh, yeah, I had 23.8. Yeah. And you, the other one, I had 45.6. Oh, no. Anybody else want to be fair? Uh, me? Okay. Yep, uh, what are we? A. A was uh, the 24 and a half metres, but you've got to take away your hobs and uh, and uh, half bases. Oh, well, what what you get? Which leaves about 20. And B, uh, A or B? B, A, A, that one. Yeah. Um, 40, 48.1. Yeah. 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 Now, these have not, do not have the 10% added on per way. <laughs> <laughs> I did that at the end, but I added the two. Well, I added the two together, and I put 10% on the way. Total 75 square metres. Yeah. 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 With message, yeah. yes. you, you need to yeah. allow your message. This is what you're going to order. Like Andrew yes. said before, yes. if you're tight and you don't get enough, no. can you get the same batch? Okay. Believe me, especially no. in the lighter tiles, I've seen different batches, different colours. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. You might not even get that tile. Hmm. Yeah, it run out I did an ensuite not so long back. Well, what's it called? Yes, now. And you know the glass drip, multi length, um, yeah, like a mosaic with the long and the uh, all over the place? And she didn't order enough because we changed how much we are putting on. It took an extra two, three, four weeks to get a couple of extra sheets. Mm. So I had to leave out the right amount to put them in later on. So it was a pain the next me to go back and put them in. Especially when it didn't fit. My uh, my boss is tired and he's pulled up on my own. 
Uh-huh. One of those Tahoe's from Bali last time I was there. Oh. I ended up coming up short. <laughs> on our last trip to Bali, went over and brought back something like 12 or 18 tiles of these. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's better to have too many than not enough, but not a lot more. No. Yeah. Quantities. When we were concreting, if we had more than a, if a, more, a wheelbarrow left, we've done something wrong. At one time, the plumber got used to bringing his own um, post to put the standpipe on because there wasn't enough timber to supply a, a post for his standpipe. You know, the tap over the That's how tight we got. Oh, your man was. Yeah. So, every bit of wastage you have is money, but at the same time, you've got to balance out that wastage factor against the cost of replacing the packing sand, the concrete, um, whatever. The time and that it's better to allow for it and have yeah. it left over and it's covered in a provisional sum, then not allow for it. Mm. Yeah. No, it's got tiles in it. Yeah. So I added my 10%, I got 19 Nine. and then 49.5. Nine point five. I know it's moving a lot. I think it's very worried. No, that's I didn't have the past fifteen percent. It's fifty point one. Right, better. Fifty point four. And the other one's twenty six point two. I've got a seventy three point two. A lot of people hiding in on the same number here. Yeah, it's coming out. Seventy three percent. That one's a bit of a worry. That one's a bit of a worry. Uh, the other ones, yeah, depend on what you've allowed for wastage, whether you're putting it underneath or around, just depends on how much you're taking off. Then we're always coming back. So, I don't know if it's like the right thing to do, but my old man just works out the area and doesn't take away the bath and everything around that. As you wastage. Like, so I did the same thing. So it came up. That's, how we, yeah. that's your wastage factor, so you're not having to so take like the off. kitchen and stuff, I just added that in. Yep. Yeah. That's fine. That was just my way. That's one way of doing it. Yeah. Hey, I need that in the house. That's like adding all your figures up, including GST, and then at the end putting GST on again. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you get away with it, yeah. yeah. People say, is that illegal? <laughs> Put the tax on the tax? <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's because because it's just a number. Yeah. It's just a number. It just you put ten. You might as well say, <laughs> I put ten percent. So we have to put it on, tax and then put, um, put another 10% <laughs> on later on. It don't make any difference, it's just a lot neater to leave the GST off and hit it once at the end. Right? If it gets tacked on for some reason, well, all you're doing is running the risk of losing the job because you've loaded on something by 10%. It's the risk you run. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> waterproofing okay, yeah. square meter rate, so once you've got all the Where'd you get that for? water areas, the areas you basically see that's where um, you're waterproofing, or it might be done by the room. Yeah. Yeah. That's what? Seven two point nine seven. Yeah. 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 Seventy three. No, you can do the bed minimum. Oh yeah. That's all we're basically doing. Oh nice. That's something I've never really thought about the waterproofing. Um, is that just a matter of the correct underlay and then that's it, painting the waterproof compound onto it, or yeah. that's all this. Yeah, but. Half rounds. Yeah, you've got to put, put a bandage that. on all joints <laughs> um, yeah. on the. Was well, well, that just like a roll of tape or something? Yeah, yeah. it's just yeah. like a, a gauze. Yeah. 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 So it's like. Well, I mean, it's 150. I don't know. Fine. 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 Not right. Well, no, but it is red. It is actually, it is actually red. They said you can do that or this. It is red. I didn't think that was right. Different products, different specifications. So it depends on what you're using. All right. Yeah. The one I used to use is bandage. Yeah. You're reinforcing that joint. It's like putting reinforcing in concrete. Now, you've also got something when you get a waterproofing called a bond breaker. Have you ever heard of that term? 
Yeah. But what a bond breaker does is give extra, extra flexibility to the waterproofing. That's a bond mm -hmm. No, no, no. Um, now, anybody got an elastic band? You got two surfaces with the, the likelihood <laughs> of a crack appearing, right? And you put the waterproofing over the top. And the waterproofing has got sort of so much gift, right? But if I put something underneath, This year we've got a construction joint in the slab, right? So that's been caught. And we waterproof straight over the top. So we'll just do the pin on one without any bandage or anything like that, right? And there's movement in there. That <coughs> waterproofing <coughs> will only stretch that crop. But if I put something across there, even 50 mil wide, so when the waterproofing goes across, it doesn't actually bond to that. It sticks on it and it dries, forms a steel skin. Now watch how much movement I've got. For the bond breaker. Still this normal bond breaker, duct tape. Very duct tape. Because the, it's the different it's, yeah, it's my, my components, the waterproofing doesn't stick it. It's like silicone. The waterproofing does not stick to the silicone. So on the articulation joint, the construction joint, it doesn't stick. But you're just getting that a little bit. Just to give you that. It's the paint on waterproofing mm -hmm. member, how thick is it? 0.2 of a millimetre. It's very thin. Okay. So it's two quarts minimum. Mm -hmm. One that way, one that way. Mm -hmm. it's dry in between. Mm -hmm. If you've got any sense, you'll be afraid. So what's your opinion on it? That's not the fact. Hang on, what do <laughs> say, what's your opinion to stick up to bend you? What? Okay, um, I, I used to do, I used to stick a flex. I, I want to bring my own back and so do buddy. I used to stick a flex and then I'd put the tape on and then I was all right. And it just, but water is insidious stuff. And it'll come back to bite you five years down the track and it will cost you a small fortune to fix that. So, Whatever you can do to stop water penetrating anywhere or anything else, do it. So the everyone flex then take let the cigar flex go off. Yeah. Everyone's using poly marble um, shower bases now. Yeah. Right. They're not even risking to hold them. Your second somebody the yeah. same yeah. that method of working joins in to render it external having a bond breaker. Um yeah, you've got to have a flexible membrane to go over the top. Well when we do render so it's not that flexible. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But we still bandage over the top. Mm. Um, with the, uh, you're on about um, homeboard uh, polystyrene. Yeah. When polystyrene came out, we used to either not membrane it and not put the bandage on. We used to either just do the joints like plasterboard, or others used to membrane the whole sheet. Right? Um, the whole sheet was a better one. Okay? Then, now, we get the boards which are pre-coated, so they've got the base coats on already, so now we've dropped back to just doing the joints. But it's not flexible um, trowel on. It has a little bit of flex, but not a huge amount. Yeah. But, um, like Andrew said, with waterproofing you get one chance. If it feels, it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. Ten years is your liability on that house. I saw one job, it was a million dollar unit, Second story, and they use this Rolls Royce of waterproof, and it's a it's natural sheet membrane, and it's bonded, heat bonded together on the lab. Hey, I'm not sure. I can't remember. I only saw it. They were putting it right because it leaves. It goes up the walls, the same as you know when you see the line off, and it returns up for where there is that. It's a bit like that, and then it's tied over the top. It's just a tighter corner, and. What they figured happened was, 
When the tiler, the tile, the, I call them a urinal, you know, the, the dream in the shower, busy <laughs> <laughs> channel. There's a couple of urinals in the house. Um, he'd gone the wrong way with the glue, because the glue should always go off with the way of the water, so anything that gets through follows these oh. channels mm. and gets through into the waste. Mm. And they also have weep holes um, to collect any moisture underneath. He blocked these weep holes as well, and they figured that was a problem, and it had leaked. So the whole of the ensuite had to be pulled <coughs> out, ceilings underneath had to be patched, plastered, painted, brand spanking you in the middle of your it doesn't matter what happens, you might do something 100% right, the next year that comes wrong, you only do 90 95%, you're going to wear that fault. And you've got to prove that somebody else is fault. So if you're not going to poly marble shower bells, and you're doing pile shower bells, <coughs> muddy, that's just, that's like suicide, isn't it? On a second story. No. 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 If it's done properly, <laughs> you take extra measures. Absolutely take the extra measures upstairs. Oh, I, I, did, I did lots of shower bases upstairs, uh, walking shower bases and that, and I haven't had to go back. Mm -hmm. And then touch wood, sure. I don't have to go back. But uh, you just have to be absolute. Oh, I've seen some absolute horror stories. Yeah, because our one at my house, we have to join you, don't do it. And, uh, Biggest flange crack. Yeah. It's and it's basically, um, the crack through there because of the weight I stood on it. You would not shower, yeah. and that master just cracked it just so off the board. Yeah, it should be reset. Yeah. It's well, there's different ways of doing it. The way I used to do my stepless showers, I'd drop the floor down, and then I'd uh, do a timber base underneath, yes. level. Then I'd form all furring channels, uh, like sloping pieces of timber through the valleys, and then bore right the joists right the way around. And then I'd use a ply. I wouldn't use chipboard. I'd use a ply. And then I'd have my cement sheet, and then I'd have my sicker flex, then I'd have my bandage, and my three, four quarts of waterproof, and whatever was needed. Well, you just have to step down and you just have it screened. Oh. Yeah, well, where do you put your waterproof in? On top of the screen. Well, underneath the screen, and then on top of the screen. Yeah, as well. now they're doing it that way. At one time, they used to put it underneath the screen. Well, it gets into the screen and it breaks down, at least. So, yeah. <coughs> How do you add them? If you do a screed, is it a wet screed when you do the tiles or a dry screed? It's dry. It's all right. Because some of them do the, the waterproofing and then they layer the, 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 the bed and they just bed the tiles onto it there and then. <coughs> the, the, we have our screed moisture tested in there before we do the second layer of the tiles. So it's probably doing it right. Most of the times you'll find water leaks at the junction of the shower screen. In poly marble, that's where it leaks because the water's running down, the silicone breaks down, you get a little bit of movement or it just hasn't been done properly, and that's where it gets the water torn. Nine times out of ten. I discovered a work at this one for a weekend, and this dirt makes the shower, wiping the vacuum, and the hands go in there. I don't know how long it's been. A long time? Brutal. Mm -hmm. the house mm -hmm. in the 70s, yeah. No water. 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 No It's No water. 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 Uh, it's like water, it just smells, it's polycarbon, uh, polycarbon, um, hydrocarbon, right? Um, and it just soaks in and you can't see it. It doesn't leave any paint residue, any marks or anything. Would, would you would you be able to, not that you would, but would you be able to rely on that as well? Yeah, it puts a, when the water hits it, you'll see it be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if you don't have any waterproofing underneath and you just have oh, it on really top. No no no, 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 no. You've got to have that then, right? Waterproofing came in oh, in its basic yeah, terms in about the 80s, 90s. Yeah, yeah. Um, we used to just, it used to be a galvanized angle in its internal corner yeah. and silicone. Then when they brought in WR board, believe it or not, it used to. 
steely edges with a green dot tape. Okay. Wait, I've actually, I've actually seen that. I've actually seen that in the building, yeah. yeah. Mm. So wherever you've got had a cut, or an internal corner, or the bottom, you put this duct tape on. It didn't stick to a cut edge of plasterboard where it stuck to the paper, right? So you put that on and then you would cork that corner. Then you had to seal it with either a sealer or an oil based paint. And that was the waterproof. And then it's evolved into what it is now. As a DBU, you can do waterproofing on your jobs. DBU can do nearly everything. Right? Um, if you've got the DBL, you have to check what that hell allows you to do. If you're a manager, DBM, you have to get somebody in to sign off that has uh, the requirements to do what you do. And it's a certificate you give the business to you. Okay. So if well, anything happens, it falls back on that guy. Cops <laughs> not. No. The waterproofing is not a compliance. There's always an excuse. Yeah, of course there is. I, I, I waterproof. What happens when the tailor comes in, or the carpet comes in, or whoever walks in, the client, they've got a stone on the shoe, and they walk through, and they just walk like that, Yeah. and they just scratched all the waterproofing. <laughs> the waterproof is the tailor as well. No, not. No. no, like, same person did the job. No. Waterproof, you can have the same person, you can have waterproof, but tailor. No, but I mean, like, I'm saying this, um, for this instance, the waterproof and the tailor yeah. are the same person. But yeah, again. From waterproofing to tiling, anybody could have walked in there, done anything, and scratched, put a ball in, whatever. How can you prove it? Once it's been covered, you can't prove who did it. Because we got a, on our job at the moment, where the tiler is the one that's given the waterproof certificate. Yeah, he gives us certificate but his laid the final the his, his, his laid the final tiles as well, so yeah. he would have known if it's like good or not. Okay, but if it fails, <laughs> who's to see is what he did it made it fail? Yeah. It could have been the timbers on the nut uh, too much movement. It could have been the client got in on the night and walked through with the, the stone in the sole of the shoe and scratched it. Or well, the eyes walked the high heels. heels. <laughs> it could have been anything. So you can find uh, it. Right? Yeah. But where's your proof? <laughs> Unless you've got the proof, and even then he's going to see a person brought here. So mm -hmm. do people get like building forensics to come in and like assess everything, or like if the builder was to pay for it and it turns out, where's is it the normal? Money from? Yeah. It's too hard, or too expensive. You're just going to go. Oh, shit. I'm going to uh, no, for the look of it. Uh, is there a um, specialty for building forensics? Like, are there like certain licenses for that? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. So, waterproofing, what are we going to do first? We're going to uh, do a No, nah, there's nothing there. Nothing in the file? No. Nah. <laughs> 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 Uh, what was it? About 150 bucks for the job. What's the lever? Two clips. Let's take 20 bucks for the lever. For waterproof. Including lever. Lever and material. Uh, what, about 20? For the waterproof, for the waterproof. No kitchen, kitchen's not a wet area. Last time I thought it was about 160, 180 bucks for a four liter drum. Four liter or ten liter? Ten liter. Ten liter. Ten liter. Ten liter. Ten liter drum. Uh, was about thirty, forty bucks for two. Oh, it's fifty bucks. Um, and then to do the floor and walls, one, two, three, four rooms. Um, the first court is the, the hardest one because you've got to set all your, your tape in there. Um, then you let it dry, then you've got to go back for 20, 25 bucks. And you take 50, 50 meters, so 50 is a dollar a meter. Okay. Uh, 
Um, around the penetrations, like the tap holes and stuff like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. What were we using around them? Ah, uh, just allowing in that price. No, I'm just looking. I'm not worried oh, about the price. There's a couple of ways you can mm. do it. If it's a nice. I think I've worked something to cover. Pin oh, for Christ's sake. Square sense. meter rate. I think it's in your fetch file. Um, <laughs> ask questions to Pin. What are you charging? What's the going rate? Oh, is it charged by the square? Uh, by the square meter? Um, you'll probably find it's a square price. Depending on finish. Right? Most of the work these days is just priced on a two court system, not three court. Three court being an under court and two top courts, because the paint these days is good enough to get away with a two court system, depending on the colour. Mm. I, I price per room. I work out how long it takes yeah. and by door. Mm -hmm. there you I, go. I, I think I get a much more accurate yeah. judge off. Everybody has it, but you can still. Do that on a, you know, if you're working on a typical average house of four bedrooms, oh, yeah, you can, price you can yeah. work on your room price, add it all together, same as we've been doing, divided by a square meter, you've now got a square meter price. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. But it depends on the finish, whether it's stain, paint, um, aluminium windows, timber windows, um, feature walls are always an extra, and any other, any other special conditions. All right. You've got to do the hard yards and find out. Just use the price, whatever's in your fetch file. Um, might give you the pieces to start from. Um, <coughs> remember about getting rid of rubbish off the site. It's not cheap these days. Um, <coughs> there is firms out there you can contract which will deal with all the rubbish. Recycling and everything, all you have to do is separate on site. So you have hard rubbish, concrete, bricks, oh, no. roof tiles. You have timber, you have metal, and then you have the bins for general rubbish. And they will come out three, four, five, whatever contract time you uh, amounts you agree to, and get rid of that. Yeah, I, I saw a site with like sacks, like bags, <laughs> um, yes, and there's like three of them. So you separate the rubbish and it's oh, really, the great big really ones like one um, sacks. Yeah, yeah massive sacks. Yeah, <laughs> 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 so brutal. <laughs> Well, that that well, 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 yeah, there's different ways. Some of the ways is just hanging out an area and putting it with gear wire or it doesn't really matter. Um, as long as you keep it separate. Um, it's a well, it's almost an unwritten law these years to do it because if the councils come out and find you not recycling or separating or whatever, they're gonna hit you pretty hard. Alright. Um Remember to allow for OHS. Any ideas what you would allow for in OHS? Scaffold. Scaffold. Scaffold's one, for sure. Health bag. Who? Health bag. <coughs> Health bag. First aid. First aid, you mean? First aid. Everybody <coughs> should have the first aid <coughs> We have a health bag, that's what stuff you are. I said all over our month. Everybody should have the one first aid bag. First aid bag. First aid. Okay. Sunscreen? Ah, <laughs> oh, it's a Not only if you've got these brickies. Yeah. The ones that are doing in the nude. <laughs> what, what, about, what about fall protection off the roof? You've got a scap off, but what about your fall protection? I thought our tiles were doing that one. Yeah, but any other fall protection, any other work that goes on without tiles? That's it. Lost, time, lost time for induction. Hey, Inductions. Fall protection. Hey, Shrink, got temperature fence, crossover protection. Yeah. What's that one that's usually doing at the start of the day? We're talking about a couple of. Induction. Not the induction that started every day, oh, like an HWMS. Two epoxy. Yeah, Three socks. Three socks. Three socks. No, 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 like you do at the start of every work day, like... The sort of that's toolbox. That's toolbox. Oh, that's toolbox. Toolbox. Yeah. What is toolbox and what is sign? What's like a toolbox that? meeting? A toolbox meeting is any given day, it might be daily, weekly, monthly, whatever they happen to be, the foreman or whoever's in charge of OHS, whoever's got to talk, the idea is he stands on the toolbox, that's where it's come from, the toolbox means. That's his platform. 
and everyone <coughs> has to attend. It's more of a commercial thing than domestic. Um, and then if there's any incidents, any um, anything that needs to be made known to everybody working on the site, everybody has to attend. Nobody can miss it. Doesn't matter what's happening, everybody has to attend the meeting. It's minuted and it allows them to put the point across and for the floor to give back. Toolbox meeting. Alright, the requirement. You will talk more a little bit more about it when you do supervision. And apparently I've just lost you for supervision. Oh, oh, no. oh. No. oh no. Why? 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 Yeah, no, no, no more book. <laughs> no more book. <laughs> you can still copy for the next one. So we were just talking about. I want my money back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we were just talking in the car about handing out. Um, it's right. Oh, we had to. It's right. It's shit, Bowie. It's alright, you're not passing anyway, so I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know, Mark? He's only got two assignments in so far. Yeah, I love yours. He's just done that. I haven't even. No, you haven't. He, you basically just marked mine twice. I haven't handed mine in. I've had an extension. I handed mine in today. No. Oh. Stay up. 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 Stay Including his graph, his supplies. Um, yeah. Supplies. And what about if you're doing a tricky area? Well, that evens itself up because you've got a big area, you've got a little mm -hmm. tricky area, it balances itself out. Oh, yeah, well, I'm about to get a tile to do 100 square metres out the back. It's a big section and it's not tricky. Yeah. I'm not ready for Amex, but it's 300 by 600. So if he comes yeah. back and tells you 100 bucks a square meter, he can tell you how to Oh, that could be real life you want in all. In real life. In real life. Well, I'm about oh. to do a real life project just for the hell of it. Oh, um, in, go on, real. I honestly couldn't tell you what that one really is. Are they porcelains or ceramics? Porcelain, 600 by 300. What's that? 600 by 300. 70, 70 bucks. Yeah. 60, 70 bucks. Yeah. A square meter? Yeah. yeah. Not including the tile. Not no, including the tile. Why is it higher than 30 bucks? You reckon it's only going to get five, five square meters done in a day or something instead of ten? Porcelain's a hard, hard as a cut. Is he going to be doing a lot less meterage per day? Well, barter with him. <coughs> You're the one paying the bill. You just get a couple of quotes, man. So it's not hard. Just ring around. So you don't want us to use these 32 bucks? He's going to supply glue, so that's going to come out of that money. Um, cutting porcelain tiles, the right tools to cut with. You need the decent five, six hundred dollar yeah, yeah. tile. Have you ever tried to drill through one of those things? Yeah, yeah. well, that's another thing. Yeah. Uh, if you've got drill any more, you need a diamond. Yeah. You want a cheap tile? They, they wear out quite quickly on those. Yeah. Yeah. You want a cheap tile? They're 300 bucks a day. Stop the bottle. Good job. I think you can get halfway through the tile. I don't know why they're five holes in a tile. That's the width of the room. 40 bucks a bit. That's the width of the room. Yeah. Uh, and, and, those yeah, it was like really really slow. and what happens so if he brings it time while he's doing yeah. it? You're not going to be right for that. He's got a chance to believe how fast it went out. Yeah, yeah. So you're going to lay out for all that. No, no, no. I don't really know. It's so good. 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 Yeah, but a big area that's a, that's, that doesn't have any yeah, tricky things yeah, to do, that well. drops the price. <laughs> depends on, it depends on how flat the, <laughs> the surface is and everything. He'll come in and go, look, this is lumpy as hell. I'm going to have to put a shitload of bloody... Yeah. It, it, it's, it's so many anomalies. My my Tyler, he was brilliant. Like He made my work look really, really good. The porcelain, he'd be charging 75 bucks. And I, I used to tell the client, this is what he charges. But... It's going to be a good job. Yeah. Don't you get a good job and never have to go back and... I've heard some charging 100. Every number yeah. 100 plus. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'd give you him any day of the week. Brilliant, this guy is. Mm. You don't want us to use this 32 in here or not? Yeah, or if there's a price yeah. in there, use that price. Okay. 
Yeah. Alright, please. If there's a price in there, I want you to use that because, and I'll tell you why. When you all do your price of your house, I've got a ballpark figure I'm looking for. 10% either way is sort of acceptable. Once you start getting outside their parameters, I'm going to really look hard to find out why you get that price. If it's justifiable, yeah, that's fine. But I've seen some people allowing for site sheds. Who allows for a site shed on building a one-off, yeah, three-bedroom no. house? The guy that works for us does. Site sheds are huge. Look at the <laughs> That's a site shed. The quote the other day that they allowed forty-eight hundred dollars for uh, for a concrete pump for half a day. Well, there you go. <laughs> so you know, I'm looking for these anomalies, which uh, I mean you, you just haven't quite understood that part. It's all about understanding. It's not getting a hundred percent right. Because, like I said at the start, I expect everybody to get a different price, and apart from them two, copy off each other apparently. Feel? Make sure you change it a little bit and don't give it at the same time. This is almost as good as that eyes joke that you're trying to tell me the other day. Remember that? Oh, and it, oh, oh yeah, yes. <laughs> Why you? Um. All right. Uh, yeah. I'm looking at. The, I'm trying to get the, the general understanding. I can't teach you estimating in six nights. <coughs> it's not possible. It's the basic principles of estimating. I'm trying to get that across to you. Right. Um, okay. Cleaning. Clean. Site clean. Yeah. What about cabinetry? Like, oh, cabinetry. It's always going to be a quote, a provisional sum. Um, you can get or work to a linear meter price. It's not accurate. Um, how have they done it in there? <laughs> Well, they've given us different prices for different. Yeah, I've they've given you a full brand new kitchen for seven hundred. <coughs> yeah, yeah, kitchen cupboards, five hundred and twenty. What is um, that? Um, toilet, side toilet. Yeah, beautiful. There you go. Full kitchen, seven hundred eighty bucks. I've got one really good kitchen. Kitchen. I'm Tasmanian. Not I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not living there. Oh. I don't think it's got a sink in it though. Yeah, sorry. Well, I'm going to get your tiles done. Why is this broken? Like, I can't even change my phone. Yeah. Where's my six board, my piece? Uh, Three hundred and sixty-two. Everybody left Brian in a go kart. Five bananas on that. Mario Kart stuff. You should tell him when he goes go kart and you get like a little trailer behind it, like a skate skateboard. Five bananas. That's a big goal. She's gonna turn him shell. Turn him shell's going around. Give a little Mario the mobile guys got me down to in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, And they were, um, and bananas and people. And, like, he's made them drive away. It's like a big hat of thing. Throws it like a turtle shell. Like, it takes him out. Anybody seen it? Where's what number's the, um, kitchen? All the molded. Cabinets. Um, 80, yeah, 87. Cabinet works. On, on the right hand side, yeah. Same with the ensuite cupboards, and they've, they've given us a sort of a. That would be a linear meter price. Yeah. <laughs> so, with the prices in there, she's trying to put out whether it's a linear meter, square meter, because the information is not. Um, <coughs> where did I see it? Linear meter? Laundry covered laminate, 250 bucks. Um, so these are all linear meter tops. Covered laminate, 250 bucks a meter. Then it will be two, uh, 520 a linear meter. So you just scale off your cupboard and apply whatever information you've got. Okay? It's the way they used to do when I was estimating at Broaden Hill, uh, which are a mid tier builder. That's how they used to estimate their kitchen cupboards. 
Not my so, idea of a cup of tea, but it was by the lineal meter. So is that the, the width of the cupboard is the lineal meter? Yeah. Okay. Doesn't matter that it's 2 meters, 2.4 high. Oh, if it was a uh, <coughs> pantry or something like that, it would have a unit price for a, okay. a corner pantry or a fridge or something like that, yeah. And that just has, what, a standard depth of, what, like 600? 600. Yeah. Or 300 for overheads or something. Okay. Yeah. So it'll have an overhead that I would imagine. I haven't looked back towards the overhead. <coughs> oh, think of a realistic number that you would use for a linear number twice. Go down to Bonnings if you're that ready. Or next time you're in Bonnings or Masters and see what's charging for a, a cupboard. Yeah. It's a realistic price. That's right. Yeah. Vanity for 199. Yeah. Two ways of um, getting the prices on cupboards. One is the flat pack stuff that Bonnings and that are selling. Bonnings, Masters, wherever. Or you can have the bespoke, purpose built kitchen cabinet, which are made to suit a room, measured and fitted. All right. You pay a lot more for one than the other. Uh, depending on the house you're de uh, building, cheapest way is a galley kitchen. If you're clever enough. One wall, island bench. Open end. You can use six, nine hundred, twelve hundred units. And you can get it in. It's nice and cheap. Flat pack. It's usually after the size you're coming in. And the island bench is freestanding. You just see the fortune. Where if it's built into you know, two corners, three corners, it's going to have to be a bespoke kitchen, or you're going to have to have infills, or wherever it happens to be. <coughs> so it's a matter of going through this and working out what prices they've got. All right. You've got me for about the next module is a pretty big module. Um, I forget how many nights. Um, uh, eight nights. Eight, eight nights. Oof. What one is it? Planning work. <laughs> right? So, all right. Hmm? No, no, it's all about planning the building. How are you going to approach it? Um, order a building, how much time you want to give somebody to do it, what your requirements, what you need to think of. But it's also about the whys and wherefore. You know how I just talked about uh, the one breaker? Why we do it? There's a lot of that in it as well. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That'd be great. Build the we'll science make. of building. All right. We'll put the technical spin on it. Why we do stuff that we do for you know we just take for granted. Why do we not put black or try to not put black inside? Um. So you better have a good look at that. Find out what prices are in there. <coughs> not try and source a price or ask me. Um. And we'll just come off the number. That's why I wanted to discuss a, a labour price. So we end up working out what, what the trusting system would cost. Them. The trust? Yeah, the trust. Uh, so that's, for a class point of view, that's just one thing. I don't think anyone's actually going to go and ring up a trusting company. No. That requires yeah. that where, you, where, you, where you're engineering drawings and so forth. Danny, that's it. Yes. Have a look at a plan that's about a three bedroom one. If you can access a, a price, I don't want to know the price, divide it by square meterage and just get a square meter price for what they were charging for the trusses on that. Yeah. Yeah. There's that. That works. <coughs> and that's a ballpark here. So, I mean, I've, got, I've downloaded a few off the internet, but they're a bit all over the place. Yeah. yeah, you will find that. Mm -hmm. it, it all depends on the sheer size of the roof. The more valleys in there, the more cost, the more work. Mm -hmm. right. The values are the, the ones that hold the price up. Um, where else do we need? Uh, insulation, there is prices in there for insulation. Square meter, okay. Uh, I just saw, that, saw it, there's garage door prices. There's a window price in there, but uh, we've got double glass. <laughs> is that price going to be the one we use? Um, what number? Uh, it's 56. And use that price. Windows you're going to put out for a quote. Okay. You're going to put out for a quote because <coughs> unless you do volume work, there's never two houses the same for windows. 
Yeah. Once you do get that, well then you've got to square me the price you can work off. Um, as a rule of thumb, my I was used to work on 900 increments. So I either had a 900 be full height or 900 be half height. And I had a price for each one. Uh, depending whether it was timber or aluminium. But that's something that you get as you work and get the prices in. I can't give it any other way. Um, so you didn't give your window chisel to your window manufacturing? Yeah, 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 almost. But I can no, all get a rough price yeah, yeah, when I was working yeah, out yeah, yeah, me costing. Yeah, yeah. So pretty much for this job, we're going to end up with job lot prices for the windows, for the yeah. roof, roof tiling, yeah. and for the truss system, and everything else be pretty much <laughs> worked <laughs> off. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 So that's one you've got to estimate. All right. So normally for rubbish, you might take two hours um, if it's a contract. If it's not contract, if it's your bobcat that comes in whenever you need it, it's going to be a minimum of four hours, plus get rid of the rubbish. Okay? Uh, house cleaner. You don't pay 40 bucks because you're not a tradie. If you said about 25 bucks an hour for a cleaner, usually there's two of them. Um, a lot of the times it's just a housewife or a team of housewives yeah. earning some money on the side. And your house oh, or husband and wife. Or husband. We usually clean our own houses. Yeah. That way, any faults in that I can pick up on the way through and wreck the client before the client got the signal. Mm. Also, then you're not mopping up after someone else after they've done a crappy job. We've, we've had cleaners come through yeah. and these. Yeah. Yeah. Once you get a good one, use them. Yeah. Keep them. Yeah. I, I had a, uh, and I can't remember their uh, the company name, but they're basically Vietnamese husband and wife. Didn't speak a lot of English. Really pleasant people. Really good job every single time. But the first time I used them, I went through and went, "Oh my god, this is so good!" And used them after that, and just called them up, and they were great. If you've got a good one, use them. If they if they're bad, yes, they're bad, and they'll do damage and all sorts of shit. Oh, so. they, well, they just you can't do and just. And the hardest part to get across to your client is build this clean is not the clean the wife would do. <laughs> it's a clean, it's not going to be pristine clean, right? But you try and tell somebody that how you word it is the hardest, yeah. one of the hardest things in the buildings. Um, Getting that point across that it's not a immaculate eight-year boot off the floor clean. Yeah. Yeah, it's a builder's clean. And quite often you'll find dust will settle for weeks. And once you've done that clean, nobody goes in there with shoes on. No, no. <laughs> Other one is don't you let any of the tradies use your uh, toilets. <laughs> <laughs> Made that mistake. Yeah. Don't ever let them use your toilets. Oh. Yeah, no, always have a dunny outside and don't connect your toilet inside so they can't use it. Sure. And make sure you put a sign on it so they know that. Glad wrap it across the top. Glad wrap it, yeah. They'll still try. Duct tape. Duct tape will lay down. Rebounding. You've got to work out what sort of shower screen you need. Two panel, one panel, whatever it happens to be. Um. The brick cleaner, uh, it'd be comfortable price on brick cleaner. Just go to 40 bucks an hour. Uh, 40 bucks a, a square meter. Square meter, yeah. yeah. Um, plus GST. Hey? GST at the end. Oh, plus GST. Yeah. It yeah. went through and it was. Yeah. Alright. Something you need to be aware of. When you're the brick is near the bricks, depending on the joint, <laughs> Whether the brick cleaner uses a gurney or whether he does it by hand. <coughs> if you're doing a raw joint, uh, and you want that nice smooth joint, don't you can't gurney. Don't, no gurney. Yeah. It's going to pick all the mortar finish. <laughs> right, so you've just ruined it, and you're going to have to repoint, which is going to be messy and expensive. <laughs> so you may have to pay more for him to wash it by hand. I'm not going to like it, but I've actually seen it happen, the supervisor I knew, he says, look at this, the front of the house was an iron rule joint finish, 
and they've hit it with a gurney and ripped it to shreds. Mm. What did I want to do? Yeah. Well, back to yes. the brick cleaner, but it should have been noted on his purchase order, washed the front by hand. Yeah. So, Does that apply to all, all types of... No, it's just the aimed joint, because the aimed joint, like I say, they're using either a, 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 a metal bar, bent, mm -hmm. Used to be a horse pipe, or it can be a horse pipe, yep. wherever, and you get a dead smooth, hollow, yep. round finish. Okay. Last thing you want to see that's all pitted. So, if it was just like a flush? Flush, yeah, it's a trowel finish, it's not going to make any difference. Okay. Struck, trowel, flush, whatever you call it. Yeah. Rip joint is still going to be rough. It's only the iron joint. Iron. Iron. Have I mentioned top point? I don't know, but I went no. through and checked all this spelling today. The amount of spelling mistakes I've had. Where? Because you're telling me all these brand names, I don't really uh, hear them properly. So I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, the help of you spoke English, that's all. So. <laughs> Speaks the Queen's English. What was the other one? It's Granny, Granny's Guard. But you know, right I've Granny Guard. I'm walking up. Granny Guard. I'll probably say Granny Guard. I came across it quite by accident. <laughs> <laughs> Did you find a Granny Guard? No, I found the Granny Guard. <laughs> <laughs> granny Guard kept it coming out with all these dodgy websites. <laughs> straight to that? Straight, straight to that? Yeah. 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 You're learning more than just taking for granted. <laughs> um, well, all your fixtures and fittings down here. What you need to do? Gold waste pipes. Yes. I like that. Gold waste pipes. Um. It's for the um. Yeah, plumbing. It's for yeah, the building. Waste yeah. per point. I think it is. Everything yeah, we've got. Plumbing last week. Or is it a thing? We did change the waste to a waste per point. Lot of materials, steel for your lentils over your windows. <sighs> you need to work out what you need. <sighs> Length. The lintel is 150 each end bigger than the window. So you need to put 300. So if it's an 1800 window, you need to allow for 2.1 uh, lintel. Okay? Flying serves are all there. Fixing materials. So there should be enough prices there. Uh, garage roller doors. <coughs> Do you want to add dresses? Yeah. Yeah, yeah but someone has not everyone has eBay. Just shut up. <laughs> 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 brick cutting, two dollars a brick. <laughs> Nobody does that these days. Most bricklayers carry their own brick cutter. It's just part of the price of per thousand. Okay. The only time you hear that is if you get the block work done and they're going to cut the blocks. That's why you have to calculate out how many full blocks. Half blocks, three quarters, corners, um, coins, dots. A dot is a quarter block. How many splits? You need to work out all of them. There's a lot more work in estimated block work than there is brick work. Because one brick will do anything and everything. Um, the brick work there. Uh, 7, 900, 900, 1200, uh, 7, so some of the prices are realistic. I still know their volume builders in 750,000. Shit. Who do they get to do these jobs? Are you importing these people? Yeah, you know, no, are they? The thing is, they're, they're not that many brickbuyers around, <laughs> they're demanding whatever money they volume want. Volume builders yeah. dictate to them. Because they get the continuity of work. Because they, they pop one job on to the next. Two thousand times a day. They're doing a lot of, a lot of jobs. Yeah. 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 Yes, yes, yes. We right. that last time. We did want a little calculation on the wall. It actually worked out pretty correct, what we worked out. Well, 
Five by three or something. Five by three. Five by three. What's a block? Hundred. Block. 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 Concrete. What's a block? Concrete block. You told me three. Three by one ninety. Talking about a cinder block. Which size? One of these. Just measure it. Four hundred by two hundred. With morning. All right. Three hundred. What size the brick? Two thirty by eighty seven. Blocks two. With mortar, right? If you work out the area of a brick, if you work out the area of a block, then divide the block by the area of the brick, you will get how many degrees you're raising? Three point three and a half. Three point six. Roughly three and a half. So you have four. I charge double the Four bricks to the block. Well, if you pay in 90 cents a brick, 90, 18, 27, $3.60 a block. Roughly. What, that's a half block? There's so, much block? Money, there's so much less work money. putting in a block, eh? Hey? There'd be more money for a brick because obviously putting more water in, there's more travel work than in a. Yeah, block. but these are heavier and there's more plumbing work than everything. Oh, we've got to build some muscles. There's a rule of thumb. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's weird work. Depends if you've, got one, if you've got a contract to say if they're going to get caught for the fire brick. Yeah, I'm just talking about, um, I'm thinking of the, the bricks, I, the blocks I used to use, you know, the split C and M, the imitation rock face. Oh, no. yeah. You're familiar with them? Oh. Is that right? Yeah. Where's the other option? Oh, my we start. Okay. Yes. Are you serious? <laughs> yes, Colonel Dan. Have we done roof plumbing yet? Yeah. Yeah. So, guys, we're heading around a list of Christmas parties. <laughs> I said find me. Bullshit. Alright, everyone, we're going to raves. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't there a lot. It's going to be like these people at the door. That was not good when I got me that part. <laughs> it's so weird. It's, 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 it's so, you guys, I'm going to have a quiet night, have a few drinks, go to the toilets. So, what do you want to buy, man? <laughs> I don't know. You get it early and you have food when it's kennel time. <laughs> Where are you going? Rolling until like 7 a.m. and it comes. I'm going through to Monday. <laughs> <laughs> no, my heart. Oh, oh, oh yes. Did he say this? Oh, yeah, it's a sandstone. That is what I. I had a drink cleaner that acid washed that. Yeah, no, you don't. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what you're doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You put that whole thing in the top, all over. You do not touch concrete with acid. These are concrete blocks. Uh, <laughs> you can do whatever you want with acid. Or who has wanted to see the houses I built? Yeah. Oh yeah. But isn't that how you clean a concrete floor before you want to put something in? Well, that's, a yeah, that's a concrete. That's a concrete. Did you build that? That's because that's you the concrete block. It's porous. It'll just. Yeah, it'll just destroy the top. Mm. Eric, well, there's, there's a job that we did, and um, <coughs> it's like the bricklayers uh, basically <laughs> <laughs> didn't cover the paving. Yeah, and it looks like someone put about 200 shotgun rounds through it. Yeah, yeah. it that just eats yeah. the surface that we're absolutely destroyed. Something's out of level there, mate. I can see more at the top of the door. And Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. Change it. 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 Hey, I think, I think you forgot the... Take it later. This was a bad idea. That's at the top of the... What are those? I mean, I would not take a bath. Oh, shit, brown. Yeah, where are the taps? Oh, I, I think you forgot the tap knobs, Eric. Hey, hey, yeah. uh, no, no, it's all good, it's all good. How's Eric going to turn the bath on? 
It's on the other Dog side. Brown. <laughs> Dog shit brown's in there. But that's a reflection of it, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> is there a window in the shower? I've got some in the shower. Yeah. Oh, it's just two eyes. I'll shut the flashlight on. You want some batteries? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, guys. <laughs> you want some double A batteries? <laughs> oh, wow. Oof. Oh wow! Oh. Laundry. Almost like glass. That is. Eric. Is that a safe? It was a fireplace. No. Double S. Double S. No, that was a lounge room. Looking in. That's the bedroom. Design. You, you designed this. No, yeah. Was it something you built for a house? What was it spare? Yeah, I can look at the colours on this one, man. Eh? Can I look at the colours on this one? How old was the people that built it? No, it's a spec. What, what's spec? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that, that, that looks good. Speculative. Yeah. That speculative. It's if you yeah. speculate, you build a house and you hope somebody will buy it on here and you'll make money. Is that, is that, is that, oh, true. Is that so you, window you're, frame? you're working for nothing yeah. pretty much. Yeah. And then no. you just went, but when you sell it, then you make money. Oh, okay. How much would you put on? How much would you put on top of your spec? What's the flooring material you use? Is that level or ceiling? Hundred fifty percent. No, it's. That was pretty cool. Yeah, that's it's a mess, mate. It's a mess, mate. It's a 140 by 35 board. That's I had some left off a big deck I did on the Ram House, I showed you. And so I used that and had a violin. How was building the Ram Dirt House? Where did you get the Ram Dirt from? Right. Yeah, you got a specialist to. Uh, so, because of the, the amount of decking I had. Funny, for so that one, they actually look like, look like cedar. That's why I think, why would yeah. you be using cedar for decking? I made a feature over the shorter pieces. Mm. 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 And that's just a damn bare foot area. So, it's up to use cedar. Funny, a door looking out the Alfred store. That's not bad. There was a wooden column outside before, it was fairly, fairly substantial. Was that a hollow or...? Uh, there was a post at the front door. It was a solid post or yeah, a hollow? Yeah, Cypress. Right. This is all your design? Yeah. Everything. Well, there's... What are you moving there? Hey? Why didn't you move in there? I nearly did. Because it's about six doors up the road from me. <laughs> and when I put it up for sale, it got to a point where it was, oh, if this doesn't sell, uh, I'm going to have to put mine on the market and that one, and depending on which one sells, I'll live in the other one. And that uh -huh. week, this one sold. Oh, winning. Yeah. So that was a bit daring. <laughs> Can't really. was that, it, it was your own project, you said. Yeah. That's uh, 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 a yeah. rosewood laminate around there, the border. <laughs> this, this here, you can't really tell. It looks like a first year apprentice has tried to do liming and it's gone wrong. <laughs> I saw the swatch sample and we spent two, three hours in with me at the cabinet <coughs> trying to work out a colour for the, you know, that matched in with everything. And this was the only one that come up off a little swatch. So he's got the board in and he's rang me up and says, Are you sure you want to use this? I go, What do you mean? He says, Well, I think you need to have a look at it. Can you show you? So I went down there and we looked at her and went, ah. Oh. Was he trying to spray it on or was he wiping it off by hand? You'd think it was with a hard brush, mm. you know, a scratchy yeah. brush. Anyhow, so we went through all the colours again, another two, three hours and gone, oh, I just use it. And um, not everybody's cup of tea, but not long after that, the disc continued. So <laughs> it must have been very popular. Hi, Eric. <laughs> Last week, you can make it. Your ideas. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, this is built to uh, yeah, charge a royalty. It's actually just gone up for sale. <laughs> he had 60 to 930. <laughs> you should have held on to it. Yeah. I'm so bad, man.
Yeah. Did you do many of those projects yeah. yourself? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I did uh, about one a year, sort of thing. Yeah. Um, Is that off the shelf front door, front entry door, or? Yeah. <coughs> it's a double door. Mm, okay. There's two, <coughs> and see the tiles, the dark one against the light one. They're actually two different size tiles. Oh, okay. Yep. And um, what were the four hundred and four hundred? The other one was six v six, and the six v six was a slightly different thickness. So I give myself a, n- a nightmare and a half blending everything into the same height. Yep. But just to give a feature coming through, I designed it so them are cavity sliders, but they're like a full height cavity slider, uh-huh. 1200 wide. So when they were open, it was open plan. When it was closed, it was closed off. It was when uh, the five star first came in. So was trying to With the cavity, and cavity doors, do you find that you had a lot of problems? I hope they were installed, they bow out, the, 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 the cavity, the cavity section of the, where the door slides mm-hmm. in them. Mm-hmm. What happened in his house? Every single one of them. Probably the heat, doesn't it? Well, I think it's probably bearing on them, that's why. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. sliding, see, like, that's, um, that's very exciting. Uh, heat might do a different heat. I don't know. But no, I've never, never really had a problem. Mm-hmm. That's, um, you can't really see in this, but that is all granite around there. See this one, sorry. Uh, and there was four grand just in that there. Yeah. Oh. Everything was mitered. The man made a brilliant yeah. job of it. Yeah. It was all mitered. Yeah. Is that worth it? Like, okay. you'd, you'd risk that again, yeah. get your money back? That's a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I, I sort of, mm. I, because granite and um, cedar yeah. stone yeah. is in raw, you know, if you put so laminates no. on. It, no, no, I'm not saying that cedar stone's good. Yeah. But using granite, I mean, quite, that's just expensive. Oh, it was a C stone that one. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so I could back by just using a laminex on the, the, the bench behind it, but I tried to match it as close as possible to the colour, to the costings. Um, and then it was a, uh, I think the red, the bath was inside there as well. So you can't really see it in this picture. Is this a house or a townhouse? It's a house. Uh, but 26 million square, so single story, single story. Where is it? In Mornington. Where is that? Front door. Front door. Kitchen. Kitchen. What was the feedback for clients on those double windows? They're like two levels of the road. Ah, pretty good. Well, the people who bought it went in the market for a house. They bought their retirement house, they'd been in it a, a year, year and a half, yep. and they were just there kicking tires basically one weekend, saw it, put me an offer in, and it was a six month settlement or earlier, depending on how quick they saw theirs, and they saw theirs within four weeks, so they were in it two months. Oh, God. And I got a big deposit to count the balance, so mm. yeah. So they went in the market and found work. I don't really work them windows. <coughs> can, I, can I ask a question about the windows? I can't really get the yeah. perspective here. Someone might hard to be looking at, be looking straight into the into the solid section, not into our. Yeah, the window. yeah. Well, that's correct. That's it. But when you think when you're at the bench, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. Well, looking down. Well, it depends. You know, you, I'm just what, up in the morning. I don't really have much clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> you do that. <laughs> yeah, if you're crack tight. Up. Yeah, I understand what you're talking about. You just need to get away your red grannies in the kitchen. What, so what, what side is that facing? The <laughs> that window <laughs> side? Did you come to my place? <laughs> Wait, but my is it like north, north or? Hey? Is it north? <laughs> north facing or? Because everyone wants to get the door. You don't get the door. Wait. Yeah, well, it's just like a Because if you've got a normal height, you've got to bend down to wash. Yeah, so yeah, see, with those windows at that height there, they'll show every scratch on your bench top, so it's perfect. Yeah, that's about one of the lights going through a wicked hole. But like you know, the best stone mason I've come across that didn't work, and he was a pom, and he was called Pommy Granite. Unless you guys can understand each other when you talk. Yeah, you're the cop. Cool. Yeah, books. Not quite. Books. Books. I like that one. You know when you normally have a kitchen? 
you're sort of sitting inside the L, standing inside the L. This was the opposite. Okay. You were on the outside of the L. Okay. You got twice as much brain space. Mm. The amount of work, research I did into this kitchen, and I ended up setting it out on the garage floor um, before I designed, you know, in the design process, but to get it to work and everything like that, it took me years. But the amount of cupboards in that in that space was huge. Have you got your triangle? Yeah, the sink's there and the thing's the behind. Sink. Up there. This is oh, the sink. Yeah, and there's the bridge there. Oh, yeah. What's this triangle? Ergonomics for a kitchen, it should work as a triangle because it's the amount of distance whoever works in the kitchen travels. So you shouldn't be traveling, like, you know, the bridge was across there. You've got the sink there and the oven there. It's just not practical. Mm. It's that triangle that you need to achieve. That's a window, isn't it? That's not a door. At the end of the kitchen. Head window, yeah. Just a big arm. Looks into the upper as well. I'll just put that around. Really uh, okay. uh, in my head. Oh, yeah. That's a, a plunge bath. So it's deeper than normal bath. Why well, would a stepping bath? Just because it's so high. Because it's oh, yes. Yeah. Step down into But because of the wick, I couldn't afford to make that any wider. Uh -huh. So I actually framed towards the bath, inside the bath. Not easy to do because you've got to still support all the bath. Mm -hmm. That's why it's got a like a frame around it, and then I've used that wick up to the bath panel to get enough for a. Is there, any, is there a regulation about the height of the step into the bath? No. no. So if you had a bath that was five hundred yeah. off the ground like that thing is, yeah. I had to slip on it. Yeah. Yeah. It wouldn't look right. It would look too boxy. Oh, okay. okay. It's a feature as well. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. And like you see, that's a, a plunge bath, so it's it was about seven hundred feet or something. So it's a beautiful bath. If you feel that, I'd be really going to have some strong support over that. Yeah. Big footings. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what are you you're strong to swim around as well. Yeah. 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 What are you? <laughs> I mean, you it's a bull thing. I look better on here than I do on this. And then I had actually towels <coughs> left, these brown towels left, and I thought I'd be daring and just go half height and then put a strip up there. Got on about wastage, didn't I? Making use of it? And you get a feature out of it. <coughs> what was your foundation for this one? It's on a slab. <clears throat> what kind of slab? It's a rock. Right. Concrete slab. <laughs> <laughs> You've been waiting to use that one. Yeah, like that. Have you done many strip footings? Yeah. yeah. The beer slab. The first strip footing. I'll leave my strip footing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So much more comfortable to live on. So much more comfortable to work on. Yeah. Uh -huh. Mm. Oh, uh, so they're right. what's called a float vanity. Yeah. Sorry, a, oh, wow. a big plinth. I think that one's the one with the orange skin. Six back, so that you, you know, it's not like a normal one. Um, Can I find, um, say I got a bench, yeah, and then I got like a um, cantilever um, off the bench. Like, is there a standard for how far that cantilever can go with how thick that bench is? Like, do you guys know where I can find that? Yeah. You leave that to the top of the account again. Oh, okay. Draw mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think we've covered just about everything in the actual estimating process. Oh, um, easiest way is to work out the cost files, cost centers. The in the um, I'm going to fill in these blanks here. Yeah?
a rendering or a no, we don't do any rendering. Oh, no uh, because they're Oh yeah, Eric. I'm gonna show us your high end. Can you just go here? Oh, man. Please. Oh, I can't. You're going about it all wrong. I'm telling you. I think they're one side out and the other side's going to be a billboard. That's why I kind of think I'm about it. Yeah, they said a very high end. How, how long was the planning process for you on that one? Like the design and. Um, no. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you have to speed it all and own a builder legislation. <laughs> oh. Save a bit. Okay, I live in a house. So I buy another property. I want to, I want to renovate or build on it. So I built that under an owner builder thing, even though I'm living in the first house. Yeah. You can build one every three years. But it doesn't have to, I don't have to be living in the property. I can own ten properties, I can do yeah. one every three years. You own it, yeah. You don't have to be living on it. It's just, uh, if you sell it within <coughs> yes, yes, seven so years, you have to have one insurance. And you can build one in every three years. Okay. Oh. Mm. That's just answering a question that somebody had. Yeah. That's how I understand it, but just use this one. This is the um, core forward sheet I give you. Yeah. yeah? If you go through this, you can't really exist anything in that house. Yes. Core forward sheet. Okay? So you're making all your allowances, whatever it is. Remember there was a, a costing sheet I gave you as well, which was linked to this one. I just can't find it for some reason. Call forward. Call forward. Call forward. Uh, okay. This one's both so, yeah. That's it, copy and costing. Called <coughs> copy and costing and amended. Amended? Yeah. Oh, was, I amended it when I was from the original one, so that's all I called it. When did you amend it? Copy. Yeah, it's a cool. Mate, it's not in When it was raw, I mentioned it when it was raw. Yeah. 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 So you use this as a reference. When you've worked everything out and you've got all your different parts worked out, with all the scratchings and everything to come to the final price, Probably a you then put that price in here. And you break it down to a subcontractor or your labor and materials, depending on how you've worked it. So if you're doing the frame, how much have you allowed for the timbers? How much have you allowed for your labor? And what's the total price of it? If you're getting the concreter in and he's supplying everything, <coughs> which hold does he mean? It's just the price, the allowance uh, of the subcontractor. It's in that AAA. AAA, yep. Yeah, and where? And then the bottom. Later on down the track, when you actually use it, that's your yeah. profit and loss. Uh, it's in some See how the track record goes. So if you're using all those cost centers to work everything out. Price-wise, you will not miss anything. Oh, okay. So, so our final prices on every bit will be yeah, in this one. Yeah, just the final price of each cost center. So that's so what you want us to fill out, pretty much. Yeah, but yeah. I also want you to do all the work yeah. for all the materials. And yeah. <laughs> so you want to say the workings? I want to see the workings. Nah. Yep. So I want to see the workings, how you got to that figure. Some of it's just going to be coming off the cost, but so all you're going to see is... So ten square, ten linear meters at uh, fifty bucks a uh, allowance of fifty bucks a linear meter, five thousand dollars. <coughs> Show me how you got to that kind of figure, not just a figure, unless it's a provision sum or a prime plus item. Right. Um, so that's how you got to use it, and you're going to have two parts of it. Final figure at the end. <coughs> 
Do, 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 do. Oh, just use that one. <laughs> I don't think it's that high end. Where is where is that one? Where is that one? In the far high end. Triple A. Far yeah. 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 He paid for a lot of it. Those two, copy and copy. Yeah. Have you watched Grand Designs lately? Yeah, cost yeah. Yeah. But that's copy of cost it's, it's a couple bought a block in the Isle of Wight. Uh, I kind of want to do it. Yeah, well, 900 that's... for the block. I thought they were going to spend a million bucks on the house. Uh, yeah. Two million dollars on the home. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think he just changed the name. Beautiful of home, though. Oh. Beautiful home. Yeah, There's a difference between... Yeah, the ability to and this is the hard part about yeah. building. If you've got yeah, everything finalised in front of you, the plans, the specifications, the colour selection and that, it's easy to price the house. It's when you haven't got them prices and them specifications in the detail, you're guesstimating. You're trying to read somebody's mind and pick out what they want. And a lot of the time, you're going to err on the lesser side because you want to get the job. The downside of it is lose money if you they want, want mm. the other side of it. Have they got the money for it? You know the one I told you about the triple border? Yes. That's what happened there. He ran out of money. I got paid. He ran out of money. Um, but you asked the budget borders. first, don't you? Yeah, and then you got work yeah, up the budget. Yeah, but it's a budget. What the worth to The choice item. Yeah, second people ask for evidence of funds. He wanted an ill like oven. Your... Have you ever bought an <laughs> ill freestanding <laughs> oven? Big red. Well, this one was about seven grand. Uh, what were those? Twenty-five plus years ago. It was one of the first Fisher and Paykel twin door dishwashers. Nightmare. Never put one in before. I lost money on the installation on that one. I should have charged extra for the installation. I just charged for a normal dishwasher. I learned the lesson then. Integrated front. <coughs> Integrated front means it has a yeah. door on the front that actually keeps you can't yeah. see it. Yeah. Yeah. And at the time, all the control was <laughs> was an oval button in the front of the door. And it was a, a two-pack door system. So I had to make a template to take the router, to route a hole, because I had about half a mil tolerance. I've been doing that for years. Two hours to make a template. Four hours to make a template. And then 30 seconds to do the hole. Do the hole, and I still end up scratching the door. <laughs> so, yeah. <coughs> out. That's why you buy mealy. Yeah. No, so, no, it's, it's understanding all the. Once you get into bespoke, one off, special <coughs> houses, jobs, and that, there's Me a lot Me more like. consideration yeah, needs to like go into what you're pricing. Whatever you want to call it. Oval. Why you get the square meter price always through right? the right route. They're good. It's not a problem. Yeah. It becomes a. Every so time you have to pay for that, price it for me that way. 1780. The structure is easy. It's the fixtures and fittings are about 17 dollars, I guess. 1700. Right. So tomorrow night, last night, we're going to go through the assignment again to make sure you understand everything. Any of the written questions we'll talk about so that you've got an understanding on that. Anything I've missed? Um, any questions you've got? I need to fire them up tomorrow night. Questions tomorrow. Uh, questions tomorrow. Any tonight? I'll be a little tired tonight. Well, I'll look exhausted. But, but it's all right. So, Eric, I'm Eric. Let's go on to the next one. On to the next one. Plan and build for it. No. Next one. Oh, we got to actually go next week. Yeah, Melbourne Cup. Oh, we got to break this one. Oh, we got to break this one. You didn't get your assignment done. It's Monday, it's Friday. Is it Monday or Tuesday? I'm Eric. Oh, Eric. 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 No, 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 no. Tomorrow night's still this. Oh. And building after. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> um,